to me, Yakub, and I am a tutor and uh, director at London Garnish um, Music Production School. And um, today I'm going to be taking you through a few things to do with uh, recording. Um, and essentially what we're looking at today is, you know, some of the things that we have to think about when we're recording. Um including you know what source are we recording and why are we recording that source and how would we record that source some of the settings some of the recording modes um recording itself is is really simple it's just a case of pressing a button um and you know that's uh that's all that you do um and then you press another button to stop um or press another key to stop should i say so <laughs> we're going to kind of get into it for some of you people who might who might be new to logic um you know so most of this information is going to work for you some for some of you who are a little bit more seasoned uh, there might be things that in there that you can pick up and uh, and and work with um so yeah without much further ado uh, let's uh, let's get to it so when you're recording in Logic and you're recording MIDI information for software instruments and so on and so forth, um, it's pretty simple to begin your recording process because all you need to do is press the, the letter R, which is the default in your, in your key commands in Logic. Um, and you essentially get a count in, you will get a click, and you will be ready to go so you can just record straight away um when you are working with other sources you're going to want to think about how to get those sources in in the first place um, and those would be what we would call audio sources so i have one audio source today and like i've got two essentially two software instrument sources i've got um some drums here um just using drum machine designer again once again in these sessions i'm i'm trying not to use too many things that aren't in logic um i've got um a bass synth here and um, i've got just logic stock yamaha piano to work with um and so the only audio source that i'm working with today is this is this bass synth essentially um which is uh, which is going to provide the bass line um for my song which i haven't figured out you know anything about that just yet we're just gonna you know freestyle and uh, hopefully come out with something that's okay um so you might want to obviously one of the big things that people want to record whether that's for um sung wrapped or spoken is vocals for which you would need a microphone which i have here um, i won't be recording my today vocals today unfortunately so everyone that got excited about that can uh, just get unexcited <laughs> um so the vocals um would you'd need a microphone um guitars and basses and stuff like that if you have an amplifier you would need a microphone as well um but um if you don't you can plug straight in to your audio interface um, and you can just go that way um, and other sources like uh, synthesizers I'm, I'm plugged that straight in um, I might want to record um, like if you remember last last um, session that I did a couple of weeks ago I was saying I might want to record um, my turntables which are behind uh, the camera there um, and I would need, obviously, uh, to plug them in as an audio source as well. There are other sources you can record and, you know, whatever. It kind of just depends on what you're doing. But, like, obviously, in the in the studio, you would imagine them to be instruments. Um, vocals are also classed as an instrument, by the way. Um, so <coughs> all of those instruments would need recording um, via audio. Obviously, with software instruments, it's different. You don't need to connect anything apart from your keyboard, and you can just get moving and, and do your thing um, with those. So I have connected that, and obviously one of the things that I would say of, that I haven't said is that if you have a source that you're trying to record, which is an audio source, uh, like any of the ones that we spoke about, 
um, you're going to want to have an audio interface. So I, obviously I have an audio interface here, um, which I've plugged my bass synth into um, directly. So that kind of covers, um, you know, all of that. One of the things that we, uh, one of the things that we would probably go a little bit further into um, in courses and so on and so forth would be um, recording with microphones, what types of microphones, what you need for those microphones. So um, a dynamic microphone, for instance, is quite a common and, and cheap microphone. Doesn't mean that it sounds bad, um, but it's a common and cheap um, make of microphone, which you can... Um, plug straight into your DAW and you turn up your gain and you're good to go. Um, with other sources, um, like um, a microphone, which is a condenser microphone, you would need to have 48 volts phantom power. And then, you know, obviously you get into the subcategory of, you know, what's a great microphone and so on and so forth. And, you know, we, we, we talk about all of that kind of stuff. And it's not only my students that I would talk to um, about that. It's basically anyone who's willing to listen. So um, I apologize to all my friends for talking to them about, about microphones when they don't really care. Um, so yeah, we would have, you know, all of that kind of stuff going further into sound engineering and, and all of that, which is not really a topic that I'm going to touch on today. Really, what we're trying to do today is kind of go, right, if I wanted to approach recording and I was at home with my laptop on Logic and I've got my bits and pieces, audio interface, microphone, all the cables I need for my instruments and my instruments themselves, what are some of the things that I need to be thinking about and looking at? Well, um, when you work in Logic, one of the things that you want to do is you want to make sure that you're set correctly um, with all of your settings. Um, and these are your audio settings. So if you go to uh, the screen here, Logic uh, Pro X Preferences, and you go to Audio, this is your main audio window for your settings. And here is where you would determine I'd say like there's really three things to focus on here. Um, what's your input device, which is in the middle there? What's your output device and what is your buffer size? And I'll come to buffer size in a minute. But your input and output device should always be your audio interface. I know they're not in mine. Well, my um, my um, input device is, but my output device isn't. Don't worry about that because... Um, this is only just to plug the audio into you guys whilst I'm streaming. But usually that would be the same as that, right? So, you know, there's many companies that make audio interfaces, um, M-Audio and Focusrite and, you know, Native Instruments, all of those companies. So whatever you, the name of your audio interfaces should show up here in order that when you've plugged your um, microphone or instrument cable in, um, it's basically receiving the signal. Um Buffer size is something that you want to get familiar with. Now, um, buffer size is all to do with latency, and latency is just a way of saying audio delay, okay? So when we are working with um, recording instruments, what we want to do is we want to make sure that our buffer size is set as low as we can get it on our computer without our computer choking, okay? Now, obviously, everything will depend on how how much of your CPU resources you are using and all of that kind of stuff. But um, I tend to find 128 is okay. And if I can get down to 64, as long as I'm not running a really heavy session with loads of software instruments and, you know, all of that kind of stuff, then I would prefer that for audio. Most of the time, actually, when I'm working with audio and, you know, let's say I've taken a production um, into the stage where I need to record maybe a vocalist or guitarist or whoever, um, I will be actually um, trying to bring this down as much as I can, but I will actually be working with a bounce of the audio instruments, as it, as, as it were. So it kind of helps you to free up resources of CPU and stuff like that. So I'd usually be working like down there. Um, and without getting too technical, like you can, you can like certain audio interfaces allow you to monitor live without any latency. Mine certainly does. Um, so without getting too technical, like um, that, that is always an option if you are, you know, running out of, um, you know, CPU or you, you find you can't get your buffer size down really low. Actually, when I'm mixing and stuff like that, 
um, I can I can turn my buffer size up because the latency at that point doesn't matter because as soon as I press play, I'm going to hear everything back together. So um, those are the things that you want to think about there. And uh, if you go into the general tab, um, usually you will be um, presented with information that you don't really need to see that much. Um, and generally, you, what, what, whatever is set is correct um, as it comes out. Um, sometimes um, I will have this ticked, input monitoring for only the focus tracks, but we'll talk about what input monitoring is anyway. Um, and um, and this ticked as well, independent monitoring level for record enabled channel strips, um, which is another just a setting that I turn on and off just depending on what I'm doing um, and is not really anything to worry about too, too much. Um, the rest of these tabs you don't really need to worry about um, unless you're, you know, experiencing big pro problems with like sampler or uh, you want to change editing things. Um, input output assignments, file editor, mp3, you don't really need to worry about that much. Um, recording here is something that we'll come back to, but um, the uh, automatically you will have what we call 24-bit recording, which is usually um, the, the best bit depth that we can get um, at this current point in time. Um, and the recording file type, uh, which you can switch between AIFF and WAVE uh, if you wish to do so. However, I just leave it at what it is um, at that point. We'll be looking at some of this stuff later on. Um, when you come here, you can also go to record recording project settings, which is where you can um, adjust the counting amount and you know allow tempo change recording and if you're doing takes you can colorize your takes and all of this kind of stuff um, and then obviously if you click back there to recording preferences you're back where you were before so when you're working um, in recording one of the things that you'd probably want to do um, is probably want to work uh, with um, this area of your control bar here which is known as the transport area um, and as you hover over certain things you can see you know there's a little like letter next to the record button which is R and next to the cycle button which is C um, and they are the shortcuts um, so play is uh, that's the spacebar symbol and stop is well I've got a numerical pad it's zero but it can also be um, spacebar um, and forward and backwards and all of that kind of stuff, forward and rewind, I should say. Now, one thing I like to see um, uh, when I when I start up my templates and stuff like that is um, an, another button, which is which is a great button. Um, if you right click on your um, control bar and you go to customize control bar and display, um, if you go to transport and you just go to this button here, capture recording, this is a good one to help you out. Um, and I'll show you what that does um, in a little while. Um, and you see this little record button um, appears there with a circle around it, which is going to be somewhat of a lifesaver um, at some point for you, probably. Um, so make sure you have that. And, um, you know, this you can save this as like your default template. So, you know, if your name is... Um, Jimmy Jam, one of my favorite producers. Um, you can save it as Jimmy Jam um, recording template or just Jimmy Jam logic template. So this always loads up um, and just go to file, save as template and you'll follow the instructions for that. So that's the transport area. And on the on the right of the screen um, or on the right of this uh, middle bit, which is the LCD uh, display, uh, you can see I have a couple of things here. Like uh, one of these is a recording mode called replace, which we'll look at. Um, and I have this tuner here and this solo button and stuff like that. And then I have my um, count in um, and my metronome or click as it's referred to as well. I'm going to right click again here, customize control bar and display. Um, and I'm going to just bring in a couple of things that we will hopefully look at today, like auto punch um, and low latency mode uh, is uh, another one to have um, to hand. And I think that would be, yeah, that, that would be it for me to add um, for today's session. So um, 
the way to record obviously is very simple. You just press R and then when you finish recording, you stop um, by pressing spacebar and then you want to play back and you press space again. And we, we kind of know all of that, like we're, we're, we're there at least, right? So um, here I'm going to, um, just gonna uh, make sure that you highlight the track that you want to record on first and foremost. Um, sometimes I forget to do that and I'm like playing along and I'm like, well, why doesn't this actually work? And then I look and I go, oh, I haven't actually highlighted that track. So when you press R, you will hear a count in based on the count in that you have selected. I generally have one bar. So. And then obviously I can begin recording um, I, and I'm good to go. If you ever want to change your count in, just go up to one, two, three, four here, which is your count in <laughs> and uh, right click and you can change it to whatever you want. So you can have no count in, you can have two bars, so on and so forth. Um, you know, two beats, one beat, whatever you want. Um, and actually this is a quick, another quick way to get to your recording ses settings that we looked at before as well. So that one there. So um, my counting usually remains at that. So when you're working in uh, Logic and you're recording, um, let's start with, uh, let's start out with some drums today. Um, so when you're working, um, you might want to try a few different recording modes, okay? Um, so I can go in and if I'm recording my drums, let's say, um, I can go in and I can just like lay my drums in and then stop and, you know, re-record and stop and re-record and stop because like generally speaking, like with my drums, I'm going to get the foundation in, which is a kick, uh, a snare or a clap or a rim or whatever you're looking for. And then some hi-hats. Now, if I'm in cycle mode, which is loop mode, um, I can obviously stop, start, or I can just keep it going. Um, and when I'm working with MIDI, particularly in, in the case of a software instrument, if I'm putting drums in, I might want to actually move to merge mode, okay? So instead of having to stop and start all the time, um, which is what I would not prefer to do in this situation. Um, I want to be able to just go through, um, I'm just trying to think of how many bars I'm going to put together in my head here. I'll put four bars in. Um, I, I can go in and uh, I can um, lay in my kick pattern, then stop, then come back round and lay in my snare pattern and then stop and then come back round and lay in my um, hi-hat pattern. Although, like for a lot of people, they would just prefer to do it all in one pass, essentially. And, you know, I again, I don't know how well this is gonna go, um, but um, I can go to that um, menu we were in um, by going to, uh, go to file uh, to get there quickly go to file project settings and um, recording or like we showed you or like I showed you just now you can right click here and you can go to recording settings or you can go right click here and you can go to recording settings I'm actually going to go to recording preferences sorry um, so that was sorry that was the original menu that I went to preferences and recording or just right click on your um, record button and go to recording preferences. You can get to either one from there, settings or preferences. So uh, that's a nice quick way to get there instead of having to go all the way up there. So here you can see when I have overlapping recordings, yeah? Um, in MIDI mode, as in when you're working with MIDI, um, you can choose a, a few different options. Uh, you can choose to do what I'm doing, which is merge, or you can choose to overlap, or you can choose to overlap or merge selected regions. You can create a new track, or you can create something called a track alternative. Probably a bit too much to go through in this session today. Um, or you can do what we usually do with audio tracks, which is create a take folder, 
And if you have ever worked with audio before, um, you would know that we can do things like comping and stuff like that. So by default, my uh, MIDI is set to in both cycle on and cycle off mode. So whether I'm playing in loop or not, um, it's set to merge, which means I won't have five different regions when I'm entering, you know, my drums. I'll just have one region with all of my drums on there. Now, this is sometimes a good thing, sometimes a bad thing, just depending on how you work with drums. Some people like to have different regions and then they just split them out. Um, I actually just record them all in one to get the idea down quickly. That's my way of working just get your idea in quickly and then you can do all of the stuff afterwards um that you need to do my um default on uh, on uh, audio uh, whether i'm in cycle mode or not is to create a take folder um, which allows me to do that comping and so on and so forth so i could go to create a take folder in midi as well a lot of people don't know that that exists um, but I choose to do merge, which means that anytime I'm recording and I'm in either loop or not, um, I can just play whatever I need to play and it merges with what's already there. Currently, I don't have anything there, but um, what I'm going to do is actually going to make this two bars because I'm just going to end up repeating the same pattern. Um, that's not the sound that I want. One second. Okay, so I've got this kick drum here, drum machine designer you know, um, going through that, you know, you're able to do loads of cool stuff with Drum Machine Designer really quickly and easily get um, at, at the kind of sound that you want. I've just loaded one of the kits called Thick Heat um, just because, you know, it sounded good. Um, and I'm just going to jump into record mode. I'm basically going to record a four to the floor kick, which for anyone who doesn't know is the first um sorry every beat of every bar not the first beat of every bar every beat of every bar um kind of like that so my counting is on i've got my uh, metronome or my click set to record um sorry set to click whilst i'm recording um again i right clicked on that and i can kind of take stuff away if i need to so i'm going to turn that off for whilst it's playing back so see no metronome there and then um, it's still gonna click whilst recording. I could choose to only click during the counting, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna need it and God to keep me in time, it seems. Um, so uh, here we go. Okay, so that's my kick um, recorded, right? Um, now, Usually what I would do is I would stop and go in and it's just completely the wrong sound. So I'm going to put the kit, uh, the snares on the twos and the fours. Now, remember, I'm working in merge mode here and the cycle is on even though I stopped it. But I can just go in and you'll start to see on the screen that that information will appear. Okay, so you can see here in the region, you can see how badly timed this is all as well. But um, in the region here, I'm just going to add, nope, not that note. I'm trying to pull this thing out if it will. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm going to just add some quantization to all of the notes, command A, Q. And then I'm just going to actually take the strength off so it kind of feels a bit more human. 68 seems fine. What I'm actually going to do with this pattern here as well is I'm just going to get rid of these. So it's, it's um, more of a two-step kind of feel. Um, and then obviously layer up my hi-hats. You can hear those interesting sounds on this kit. Uh, and try and just keep it nice and straight here. Okay, so I'm working with those. Need to just get in and quantize those. I can actually just, if you see what I do here, I just select those. And I can um, just work with the same quantize kind of uh, setting there. Okay. 
Okay, so that is like typically how I might do things. Although, what if I just got rid of that? Yep, I'm living life, you know, on the edge there. What if I got rid of that and... <laughs> that sample. I went like that first time round and then second time round, I might do that pattern for the hi-hats, just make it feel a bit, you know, more busy. And then second time around, when my loop comes round, I move over to my hi-hats. It's gonna work because I'm in merge mode, no matter whether where I am, like and whether I'm in cycle or not. So here we go. Okay, so you know, I missed I missed the first um, hi hat there, so. I'll just, whoa, copy that, select all, do a bit of quantization. You know, usually I'd sit here for like 20 minutes just finding the perfect groove, um, but you know, time doesn't really allow me to do that. Um, I basically have decided that I wanna add another kick in somewhere. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just play this back and I'm gonna just put a couple of kicks in. Actually, but let me put this one because that should be bang on, really. So let me put that one there, bang. That's bang on, so that should trigger now. And that, and that one as well. Um. Oh, no, I wasn't recording. Okay, so it's not the end of the world. Capture recording allows me to bring that kick back. So I was just pressed an extra kick there just before that kind of turn of the bar. Capture recording actually caught that kick and it's now there. So capture recording is there for you when you forgot to press record and or you were just jamming along and you were like, oh yeah, that's cool. Oh, I wish I was pressing record. Well, with MIDI information, um, you definitely, definitely can do that. So now that kick is in there, that extra little kick. Um, it was only just one kick or I felt like that was the correct place to put it. All right, cool. So I'm just going to go into Drum Machine Designer and just like quickly um, bring this hi-hat level down, um, which is in volume. Wow, that's a bit too much. Um, so I'm good there, right? Um, so now what I'm going to do is kind of like um, move over to my piano sound. Um and figure out what I want to do here. So, um... So I'm probably going to do like something around that kind of area. Um, so let's see, I'm going to just like take a second to jam kind of like the groove that I want. Um, and then um, I'll go in and I'll record it. Um, if I was to just like jam and then go capture recording, unfortunately, it would probably pick up a lot of the a lot of the uh, stuff that I had already previously done. So usually to be sure to be sure, I just usually would start again. I believe that logic clears when you stop um, the playhead. So it's all based on the playhead. The playhead has to be running. So I couldn't just do what I just did and then do a capture record. That wouldn't work because logic doesn't know where to put the notes. Um, so let's just have a go. I mean, I'm going to just double check that with you guys. Yeah, so you see it's got a lot of information there because um, it was recording basically every single thing that I was doing when I was in cycle mode. If it was just like I went through it once and I was like, oh, that's the one, um, then it would um, it would work. 
hopefully. <laughs> um, so here, um, it's a simple case of just pressing record, like lining up and, and, and kind of getting moving on, on, on that part. Um, might just make it a little bit faster because, you know, Okay, cool. So we'll go there. Um, uh, I don't know if I want to play it like bouncy or, or not. I'll just lay them in like fairly, um, fairly straight for now. Ah, yeah, yeah, you see, you see there, I got caught out by myself. Okay, so um, I actually, this is a four bar phrase um which i need to turn into four bars um so actually let me just go back here and show you what i did so i selected the region um i press command r that repeats the region and then what i'll do is i'll select both of these and then command u which would put the loop around the region yeah so like it's quite important that you get quick at moving around logic because you don't want to be spending time like doing too much dragging and dropping so learning those few shortcuts should hopefully help so now i'm back uh to where i should be let's go again okay so that's that right um and did i do did i do what i wanted to do i don't know that i necessarily did um okay so that first one doesn't trigger so that's uh, just excellent so uh, what i'll do here is i'll put these all on um even though that's going to give me a chord which doesn't sound like it's played by a human <laughs> Um, okay, so that would be, you know, that's fair enough and, and cool. Like, obviously, if I wanted to, let's say, like, for instance, like, I am I mean, I'm not the best piano player in the world, but let's say you're not the best piano player in the world as well. Um, if you wanted to uh, add, like, some melody on top of that, but you wanted to keep it on the same track, um, and I've, I've, got, I've got to think of a melody here, but... Um, Let's have a let's have a quick play. <laughs> okay, so I've got that little melody part towards the end there. It started out well. Okay, so I'm just going to lay in that melody part like and I don't need to worry because I'm in merge mode on MIDI. I can just record over it. Wow. OK, let's just undo that. <laughs> Come on, said. OK, so I'm going to leave that there. I made a mistake on that, that um, note. I wanted to drop that down a half step, this one here. So I'm going to press Alt and my down arrow. Sorry, a, t uh, a step. Yeah, so that's it. So now I've got Piano Plot, which I played in, in, in two separate takes. Um, but... Uh, which I and I should have a bit of melody on the end there as well, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight these two bars. So just to link that together. Uh, yes, I'm on the right track. And then I've got that little da 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 which I'm just going to double up here. So let me just do a bit of tidying, tidy that note. Um, and then this here, I'm going to just hold Alt, go to plus 12. And now I've got the melody on the piano. So... Uh, 
and that will obviously come back round. What I'm going to do is I'm going to join these two regions together, Command J, and I'm going to repeat these as well, Command R. So uh, let's hear how that sounds at the turnaround. Fine, I'm okay with that. I'm all right with it. Um, so um, what is next is basically working with audio and um, where I have this sound, this poly bass sound, um, I'm playing um, my keyboard right now, um, my synth, but you can't hear it. Um, and the reason you can't hear it is because everything's correct here. So I have this going, I hope, I hope it is anyway. Uh, I have this going into um, input two of my audio interface and uh, I can't seem to hear it. Um, and on the channel here, you can see at the top, input two is selected. Um, and what I'm missing here is um, the fact that I need to put input monitoring on. So to hear this whilst I'm not recording, I need to put this guy on here, this I input monitoring, right? And you wanna make sure that you're working with that. Um, and, and now you can obviously hear that, um, that bass. Hopefully you can hear that. So um, this bass is coming in at a good level. It's not uh, um, like uh, uh, amazingly loud or anything. Um, but if you, when you've got input monitoring on, um, if you get your level correct, um, so that you're, when on your peak level, you're somewhere between minus 12 and minus 16. So here, You can see I'm about, about, about minus 19 there. Now I can't really crank this much more from here. So um, let me just double check. All of those are up, yep. Uh. Okay, so, um, so what I would need to do is like, I would need to go to the gain on my um, interface and just turn that up a little bit. Um, obviously, if you are using a microphone, you'd have to go and turn the gain up anyway. So I'm going to turn the gain up a little bit here by about two or three dB. Uh, let's see if that's fine. I actually hasn't changed it much, but that's because I'm a bit cheeky and I've put this into a preamp and that, that kind of, into an external preamp and that kind of limits the level. But I want you guys to know uh, that you should uh, that you should be working um, at levels of about minus sixteen to minus twelve. The point really of this is don't be like having your um, uh, signal going into the red. Like try and even make it just barely touch like the yellow. Um, this is good for gain staging for other plugins that you're going to put it into and stuff like that. You will see that some of these guys are coming out quite loud. Logic instruments tend to come out quite loud. Actually, that one's okay. I expected that to be a lot worse. Uh, let's have a look at this one. Okay, so you can see that's, that's like if I was actually recording that piano, that'd be quite loud. So what I would do is I would go to the sampler, which is the sound source in this situation, and I would probably drop that down by about that much at least. We appreciate good gain staging around here. So, um, you know, make it happen if you can. Um, so yeah, my, my um, bass isn't gonna come in much louder than that just because I've got it hooked up to an external preamp and I'm, I'm, a, bit, I'm a bit of a cheat. Um, but, one thing I will say is, uh, if you remember when we were working before, we were going to preferences and we went to audio and we went to this general tab here. Now, against the other instruments, I might not be able to hear my bass sound very well when I'm recording it. And this is something I use when I'm working with vocalists all the time. So, you know, the typical vocalist is like, give me loads of vocals, give me loads of vocals. I want my vocals loud in my headphones. So, 
what I will do is I will turn on independent monitoring level for record enabled channel strips. What this means is when this is record enabled, which is just a case of me just pressing that, um, I can turn up the volume and then when it's not record enabled, I can just turn it down, right? So did you see that? So when I press it, it goes up. And when I don't, it goes down. So that means for the for the time that you're recording, you can um, at least monitor back because you will hear back, obviously, um, the sound source on that specific channel at a higher level, like that, right? So I'm going to attempt to do something here. I need to I need to get my bearings a little bit, um, but I'm not going to have that that loud. No way. Um, so, um, let's just go here, uh, just a couple of dB louder whilst I'm, whilst I'm recording it. And then I'll just drop it back into that level. Um, one thing to remember is like, um, if you have input monitoring on and you're playing against the track, you should be able to hear yourself whilst you're playing just in audition mode. Like, so you're not actually recording. <laughs> But in this case, I can't. So I'm like, well, what's going on here? I thought I could hear myself. Oh, I can, but I can only hear myself when I'm stopped. So if you're n not in record enable mode and, uh, and you're playing along with just input monitoring on, I can hear myself, right? So input monitoring works when you're not playing um, um, when you're not, uh, yeah, as in when no playback is happening, I'm trying to explain it in the most clear way possible. Um, and also when you are playing along, you can get your input monitoring, as in you can hear yourself playing back with the song. However, if record enable is on on that channel, it kind of cancels out input monitoring. And there'll be various situations in which you will want to use it and which you won't want to use it and so on and so forth. In this situation, I just need to be able to hear myself putting a bass line together whilst we are um, just having this little jam, basically. So uh, let me just see what I can do here. Let's go. Uh, maybe I won't go there. Um, okay, so I'm just going to get in and record this. Now, because I'm going to be recording, it doesn't matter if input monitoring is on or off because I'm actually going to be in record mode. So that just overrides the lot. Yeah, so I'm going to just stay on that note there. Okay, so I'm absolutely caning the outputs here. So um, here, I've now got that, right? So I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Like, that's, that's okay. I mean, it's very, very simple, but it's okay. Which is cool. Um, now I'm okay with that performance. I'm going to keep that performance and I'm going to go over it. Now you don't really get a merge mode when it comes to audio. It just automatically goes to those take folders. So, um, with this, I'm going to go in, uh, one more time. I'm just going to go into record. <coughs> I'm obviously recording on the wrong channel. See, I told you it was going to happen. I told you. I do this all the time. Um, so here we go. Okay, so, you know, I've got a slightly different flavor there, slightly different feel there, but you can see. 
um, I've now managed to get these uh, these take folders. So both of my takes are still there. There's take one and there's take two. Um, let's say I preferred the first half of take one and the second half of take two. Well, what I've done there is I've just swiped in take one and you know take two was already playing. So this is gonna actually play through, create a comp for me. And I have two different takes there, right? Um, now, what I might want to do is just like, you know, add a bit of source here as well. Um, and so, like, I feel like it's cool and it works. But what I want to do in this instance is I want to just drop in and essentially do what we call a punch, right? And it doesn't physically mean punch the person, particularly if they're an instrumentalist and they're playing, you know, great instruments on your song. Um, or punch yourself if you're the instrumentalist. But um, punch mode is something um, which many recording engineers will be familiar with. Um, it basically allows you to just go through a song and um, just pick up one line or one bar or half a bar, whatever it is. Um, and just for that specific point in the song, just punch that line in so you override that line or you replace that line. And so remember when I, um, when I started... Um, and I set up my toolbar here. Um, I want you guys to just go into here and realize that what will happen is the song will play and over this point here where this red kind of line thing is set up, it will actually allow you to do something else in that for just that point, right? Um, so if you feel like you've got a good take on whatever and you just want to jump in for a certain part or whatever, then you can use auto punch. Now I'm going to show you how this works without actually showing you, um, without actually playing anything. Um, so you have to press record, obviously, um, and then it will take you through it. So, so you can see what happened there. And if I'm working in take mode, that created a new take for me. Um, and the reason I didn't, command Z, command Z, uh, the reason I didn't um, play is because I didn't actually know what I was going to play. Um, so uh, just give me a second to figure that out. Uh, it's not too much of a problem here, but remember record mode. Oh yeah, always save your projects, by the way. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to save it as that. Um, so now that I've got audio, it's quite important that I've actually saved that project particularly. But it's just important to save anyway, so. Um, so I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna try and find uh, something to do. Okay, so obviously not the best lines I've ever played, but you can see there that I'm happy with that. Now I've got all of this like, um, I want to kind of make sure that I'm working with, you know, that and that and kind of like making sure that those those notes are playing and that note is playing. And I can come out of auto punch mode there as well. One thing you might want to do, uh, particularly if you've got like effects and stuff on, is work in low latency mode. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to put reverb on my bass because that's not what you do. Um, but um, low latency here... Um, if you remember when we talked about buffer size and if you do have to have a bigger buffer size, um, you can use low latency and you might not hear things like reverbs and delays and stuff like that on your song as you're playing back. Um, but low latency allows you to essentially record or track um, with the least latency possible because Logic kind of works out what is not needed for that specific um uh, instrument and you know other uh, other instruments and stuff as well so it's kind of a good idea to have that if you are struggling and having problems with latency uh, make sure you do that um so, and i'm going to leave that on uh, just because you know it's a nice dark orange color um what i would say here is um obviously if you're happy with this then cool <laughs> And obviously I'm not happy with that. Like that sounds bad. Okay. And so, you know, sometimes when I'm in the studio, I'm like, do you know what? 
let's just start everything again. Um, I could go in, I could delete all of that, but you can use a mode um, which is replace mode. Now, replace is a destroyer. So when you press record with replace, it destroys everything that came before it. And well, in this case, it didn't do that because it's uh, it's uh, on on the um, on the setting, which is where is it recording? Uh, yeah, audio, um, audio um, cycle on. No, that's uh, replace region erase. So that's for MIDI only. My bad. That's for MIDI only. Um, but you can erase a whole region if you feel like, oh no, I just want to start again or whatever. Um, in replace mode on MIDI. I forgot that it doesn't work on audio. Um, I thought I was working in a different DAW for a second there because I work on a few different ones. But in uh, in MIDI, obviously what this will do is instead of um, doing any takes or any merging or anything like that, replace mode will wipe away whatever's there. Um, which you can see it's already done um, uh, over there when I put that in. And you kind of want to be careful if you do have that in your control bar you want to be careful that you don't accidentally press it because that will be big trouble um so yeah t like i would go back in um and basically like do this a few times until i got it right and i felt like i was happy with that um and essentially like when you're working in this way you can also let's say just to show you as an example, um, I can also go in here and I can go to my preferences audio and, sorry, recording, and I can take this and change this into a take folder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play like a, a, another section um, and I'm just gonna jam around that a couple of times. Um, and with cycle on, I want to create a take folder as well. So record, uh, that's fine. Uh, so I've already got this take from before. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to create a new section essentially. I'm just going to just do something here. And now you can see that I've got this same situation that I had with my audio, um, but in my MIDI. So I can go, okay, well, you know, like I want to take that or I want to take that in either or, depending on what you're trying to do, um, you can have different takes of these regions. Um, when you're working and you're happy as, as, as a really, really quick thing, uh, when you're working with your takes and you're happy, let's say I was happy with that second take, what I would do is I would just go here and I would go to flatten and that would do that for me. Um, and here, let's say I'm happy with this one and I would go there and I would go to flatten and that would do that for me as well. So now I have just the takes that I've wanted or selected. In the case of audio, I could have comped that um, and, you know, like particularly if you're recording vocals or guitars or, you know, whatever, and you're doing something a lot more intricate than what I've done, which is quite basic, um, you're going to want to work with understanding how comping works and all of that kind of stuff. And you know what? I'd, I'll be able to do a session on that for sure. Um, but you get that result um, with uh, take folders and working with take folders as well. Um so I'm going to just join these all together, join that together, join that together. And I'm just going to repeat that region and hopefully it landed where it should have. Yes, it did. Um, so when you are recording, there's a few different things that you need to take care of, obviously. Um, and you, there's a few different modes and there's just those little things that you're going to want to look out for. Things like input monitoring, record enable, um, take folders auto punch you know all of that kind of stuff um 
and further to that um m much of the much of the stuff will you do will obviously be based on the actual recordings that you're doing um diving into comping if you're recording lots of different takes and and you know all of that kind of stuff going in editing if you're working obviously with midi information in software instruments and going in and editing all of that kind of stuff as well uh just before i do leave today one trick i wanted to show you here is um in drum machine designer um you get the ability to obviously trigger individual tracks here as well so um that's just my kick which is pitched up and down across the keyboard kind of like if you watch my sampling thing you would see what i mean by that it's kind of mapped out in that certain way um so what i tend to do is because this is already set out for me i will go here and i will just copy down everything so if you remember the three elements that i was using um were the kick the snare and the hi-hat and basically on this top region here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove everything apart from my kick. So, so that is my kick information there. That's my kick pattern. I'm going to remove everything apart from my snare on this one. So, <laughs> sounds quite funny. Um, and here I'm going to remove everything apart from my hats. Um, now this seems like it's all pitched incorrectly so make sure that you grab all of these and you pitch them on i think it would be show up as c3 would be the actual um key that you want all of these on so no c2 um and make sure this is on c2 as well so i think that's right oh that's quite nice actually um, I might leave that there. Um, and my hats as well. So hats, the original key was that, I think. Um, although, I'll leave them there. So here's how that now sounds with them. I have independent control over, you know, what information is on them like i can change the eq on all of them individually um, or i can just go back to drum machine designer and they'll still all be triggering in the same way oh yeah that bass doesn't work over that second part um so Hopefully uh, that's been helpful. If you um, if you would like more information about any of our courses, I don't know what I did there. Um, if you like any more information about any of our courses, please go to www.garnishmusicproduction.com. Um, we have schools in London, which is obviously where I'm from. Um, we have schools in LA, New York, um, and various different locations around the world. Um, We've got short courses, we've got long courses, and uh, obviously things like this is covered in those courses and many more. Um, but until our next stream from London, thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed yourself. So see you later. <laughs>